Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we will see the subnetting. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number one, we will understand subnetting. And outcome number two, we will know the procedure to subnet a network. Let's start with the class full addressing. We know there are five classes of IPv4 addresses, class A, B, C, D and E. And we know class A, B and C are for our purpose. For example, if we want to create two networks and we want 10 computers in each network, obviously we need to go for class C. And we know class C, we can have a maximum of 254 usable hosts or usable IP addresses. But our requirement is just 10 for one network. So class full addressing obviously wastes IP addresses. And that's why we are migrating from classful world to classless world. And classless addressing is possible with the help of subnetting. Let's see subnetting. What is this subnetting? A subnetwork or subnet is a logical subdivision of an IP network. For example, if we have an IP network and we are going to create a logical subdivision of the network. Say how many computers should belong to this network? How many computers should belong to the other network? And these kind of logical subdivisions are created using the subnetting concept. And the practice of dividing a network into two or more networks is called subnetting. Computers that belong to a subnet are addressed with an identical most significant bit group in the IP addresses. How does the computer come to know whether the computers are belonging to its own network or other network? It is decided based on the most significant bit. I will explain about this third point when we see some examples using subnetting. For time being, we must understand that in a subnet, all computers are addressed with the help of the most significant bits. Let's see an example for subnetting. Say this is a class C network without subnetting. This is a class C IP address because it's starting with 192. If the first octet in an IP address is between 192 and 223, it is obviously class C network. So in this example, we don't have any subnetting. Say, this is the network address 192.168.14.0 and we know what will be the default subnet mask for class C. It is 255.255.255.0. When we use 255.255.255.0 with this IP address, then the first address represents this whole network and the last address that is 192.168.14.255 is the broadcast address. Except this 0 and 255, other IP addresses can be assigned to the hosts. This is a class C network without subnetting. Let's see the same class C network with two subnetworks. Say here is the network address that we had in the previous example. But I am not going to use this as a single network like in the previous case. Here I am going to create two logical networks. Say this is 14.0. This is like the previous network. But what I am going to do is that with this IP address, I am going to create two logical networks. Say, how many IP addresses are possible? A maximum of 256 IP addresses are possible in this network, right? So what I am going to do is, I am going to break this 256 into two equal halves. That is, 128 IP addresses in one network and 128 IP addresses in the other network. Say, I am going to create two subnetworks. This is subnetwork 1 and this is subnetwork 2. The network address of this subnetwork will be 192.168.14.0 and the network address of the second subnetwork will be 192.168.14.128. So from 0 to 127 will be in this network and from 128 to 255 will be in this network. Why we are not able to use 127? Because in any subnetwork, the first IP address represents the network address and the last IP address represents the broadcast address. So in the first subnet, the IP address 192.168.14.127 represents the broadcast address. Whereas in the next subnetwork, the IP address 192.168.14.128, this is the starting IP address of this subnet and this represents the network address and the last IP address that is 192.168.14.255 represents the broadcast address. And what about the subnet mask here? Will it be 255.255.255.0? If it is 255.255.255.0, then we don't have any two logical subnetworks. It means everything will be in the same network. Why? Because the default subnet mask of class E is 255.255.255.0. It says that the first three octets should match. 
So in this example, the first three octets are matching. So all the hosts in this scenario will be in the same network. But we are going to create a logical network or a subnetwork. So the subnet mask will not be definitely 255.255.255.0. Rather, it will be a different subnet mask. And this subnet mask only says whether computers belonging to the same network or different network. So with the new subnet mask that we are going to create, that will say these computers are in one network. And if this computer, let's say the computer with the IP address 192.168.14.1 wants to communicate with the computer with the IP address 192.168.14.129. So they can't do the communication with the help of a switch because this 129 is not belonging to its own network. The subnet mask says that it is not belonging to its own network. So using a router only this communication is possible. With the help of a switch, computers belonging to this subnetwork can communicate. With the help of switch, the computers belonging to this subnetwork can communicate with each other or communicate among themselves. But if these two subnetworks want to communicate with each other, then they need a router to do this. So this is what the logical partition of a subnetwork. How we are going to do this subnetting? Basically, the subnetting involves five steps. Step number one, we need to identify the class of the IP address that we are going to subnet and we need to note the default subnet mask. Once the default subnet mask is noted, we are going to step number two to convert the default subnet mask into binary. Once we convert this into binary, we will note the number of hosts that are required per subnet. For example, in the previous case, we require 128 hosts per subnet. And we need to find the subnet generator and the octet position. No worries, I will be explaining about these things with an example in the next lecture. But for time being, we will just note what are these five steps. And step number four, we'll need to generate the new subnet mask. Because if we go with the existing or the default subnet mask, we can't say what is the logical partition. But once we create the new subnet mask, we will be able to say whether computers belonging to its own network or different network. And finally, Using the subnet generator, that is what we have seen in step number three, we are going to create the network ranges. We call these network ranges as the subnets and this subnets in the appropriate octet position. These are the five steps we are going to adopt in order to solve the subnetting problems. Let's take another example so that you will be having a better understanding about the subnetting. We have two devices, let's say. One device is assigned with the IP address 10.10.10.1 and the other device is having the IP address 10.10.10.9. When we have these two IP addresses with this subnet mask, whether it is 255.255.255.0 or 255.255.0.0 or even 255.0.0.0, these two devices will be belonging to the same network. Why? Because all these subnet masks, say if we take a class A subnet mask, it says, Anything that starts with 10 will be in the same network. If we take class B, it will say anything that starts with 10.10 .10 will be in the same network. So in this example, both are matching. If we use class C subnet mask, it says anything that starts with 10.10.10 .10 .10 will be belonging to the same network. So in this example, both these devices are belonging to the same network. Instead of these class A, B or C subnet mask, if we use another subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.248, then these two computers are not belonging to the same network. So they do actually belong to a different network. It means if we use these two IP addresses with any of these subnet masks, switches enough to establish communication among these two devices. If we use these two IP addresses with this subnet mask, then switch cannot establish a communication among these two devices because they are actually belonging to different networks. Because the subnet mask says it's 248, the last octet says it's 248. I know it will be difficult for you to understand at this stage, but definitely we will be exploring these things in the upcoming lectures with examples. At the time, it will be more clear for you to understand. In this example, a switch is enough in order to make a communication with this class A, B or C subnet mask. But with this subnet mask, these two devices cannot communicate with each other. They need a router because a router can connect to or more different networks. I hope now you understood subnetting and we know the procedure to subnet a network. In this lecture, we have just seen the procedure to subnet a network. In the next lecture, we will see an example. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture and thank you for watching.